Mmm. Ugh, oh, drink it in. Welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel. Even got a black and white pint today because Newcastle drew 2-2 away from home against Bournemouth. Bournemouth, just for uh, anyone out there struggling with that. Um, these are the player ratings with myself, Emil Franchi. Please follow me on Twitter if you've got nothing else better to do. Or, or, or don't, you know. Uh, completely up to you. Uh, I'd, I'd do some funny stuff now and then. Uh, in the meantime, though, let's get on with what was an unexpected point after all seemed lost, uh, salvaged in the final minute by Magic Matt himself. Um, Starting off with Magic Martin, though, in this case. Dubravka had a pretty solid game, I'll be honest. Uh, his first half uh, was a lot of just covering the posts. He dealt with balls in from Ibe, uh, Fraser. There was, there was one slight mix-up with Dummett uh, in the second half where he kind of clattered into him and uh, he maybe should have been out earlier. But ultimately, the penalty, not his fault. The second goal, certainly not his fault. He was left wide open, as always. So I think it for him on this occasion. Yedlin, he, he defensively, I think uh, Bournemouth were a bit too fast for him. Uh, he was slow tracking back, he left Lejeune exposed quite a lot, uh, so he had a lot more to deal with, but attacking wise, as ever, teamed up well with Perez, uh, but Bournemouth uh, really did quite hold uh, very well against uh, Yedlin, so a lot of the stuff that he was doing didn't really come to much. However, last ditch stuff as well. He was he was helping clear a few balls out towards the end, and of course he put a great ball in to Matt Ritchie, giving him the assist for the winner. So, um, half decent game, I'll admit, but um, I think he just deserves a seven on this occasion. Uh, Fernandez very poor, very very poor. I'm afraid to say. Uh, he gave the penalty away no matter how soft it was, you know, arms all over him. I know it looked a bit like what Bully did to Dubravka in the Wolves game, but we have no luck and you can't do that in a game where Mike Dean's on. So he, he looked really shaky anyway with most of his clearances. Uh, it didn't really go much further than, than it needed to uh, in terms of like getting the ball actually out of the danger zone, but uh, just constantly under pressure and just lost the ball and sat back when Solanke strolled through the box, which obviously led to their goal. and. And that was a right kick in the balls, literally. Um, so they got the second. Fernandez really at fault for that one. Four in this game. It just wasn't a good game. And uh, it shows how much we miss uh, Wolfab. <sighs> and the cells, of course. It's uh, it's a tough time. But Lejeune was holding his own. He was pretty good. Uh, left open by Yedlin, as I said. He dealt with a lot more pressure than he had to. Uh, and as always, he was decent with those long balls over the top, leading from the back, Lejeune. He was more of the... Uh, the, the commanding presence back there and he did make some vital challenges he felt like he was in control uh, he tried right to the end as well even helping with the attacks eight for Lejeune uh, Dummett there he is with his crown of silver hair um, I, I really need to get an updated photo but um, yeah Paul Dummett Strong to the finish because he probably eats his spinach, uh, spinach and uh, he had an excellent game. Uh, he was the last player to get to any of the Bournemouth lot. Uh, he ushered them out of play. Fraser a few times in particular uh, really helped with that. And of course you've got that big image where he's got his foot right up like that. Um, getting the ball off the line. Um, match saver really. I know it obviously didn't... Uh, stop them scoring a second but um his value in that team is, is never in doubt no matter no matter what questions you have about Paul Dummett he will literally run through a brick wall similar to what Longstaff's like because he loves the team uh nine for Dummett drink um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's needed it's needed it's St Patrick's weekend we can uh Richie now um obviously we're going to get onto the goal but uh, up until then, I have to admit that he looked very weak. Bournemouth kind of tore past him a few times. Defensively, he was a little bit run ragged. Yes, he did a good job on some occasions, but they were just too pacey. Everyone said this. In fact, I spoke to a Bournemouth fan once saying that Richie was a little bit off the pace. You could really see it in this game. Fraser passed him. I had passed him. Um, and most of his corners and set plays were wasted. Didn't really get past that first man. Richie, though, uh, he did see it through to the end. Obviously, the goal saved his game on this occasion. There was a thumping volley to save us the point. Um, and, he, and he celebrated against his old team. So, uh, big fan of that. Away the Richie. Um, uh, oh, you know what? I've written seven, but some, something tells me that I maybe need to give him an eight. And I'm going to give him an eight. So there you go. Look, look at that. Live changing as we go through. Uh, on to Diame, who was outshone by Hayden again. I still think that Diame, now that we're used to long stuff in Hayden, obviously we're not going to see it again this season, but uh, it does look a little bit slower. His age kind of showing in there. And nothing really stood out for me in this game from Diame. There was a few wild balls and passes, and he missed a few challenges. Um, you know, did an okay job, but really 
quiet game. Six from him. Shelby came on, though, and I think, again, he made a difference. Shelby's kind of turning into this impact sub. Maybe this is the place he has. I know he wants to start games, but if he's going to win his games, or at least win his points, then, then fair play. Uh, he tried at the end. There was a lovely ball into space, which kind of went over to Lejeune, got the pass to Atsu, and then went out for a corner um, towards the end. But he only had seven minutes on the pitch. I think he's deserving of, of, of a seven because he, he really did bust a gut for uh, the entire time in that one. Um, Hayden, uh, an outstanding game once again. Um, there was a tweet from the Spectator's View. Good little count if you want to follow it. Just to go through all of the Hayden's stats here, I'll go through every one. 60 touches, 41 out of 45 passes completed, five out of seven tackles, three out of four long balls, one out of three shots on target, one... Aerial duel won, one key pass, he won the most tackles made out of any player, or at least made the most tackles, and the highest pass accuracy of any player. I don't want him to leave, if I'm honest. Uh, he gets a nine this week. Almiron, his pace showed in this one, I think he was a really good attacking outlet, and he some points he, he really got into Bournemouth um, the front trio as ever really really coming into play now that Almiron's there uh, clever balls to Perez to Rondon and he busted a gut to get up that field when we broke away for uh, the free kick uh, he just tried to go as far away as he could get towards that goal and it obviously led to the free kick as I said which Rondon scored so Almiron actually doing pretty good in that situation uh, he came off for Muto uh, it didn't really do much, but he gave a lot of pressure into that final uh, few minutes, which um, obviously helped us get that goal. Um, a lot of protests toward the ref as well, to with, with the um, the back pass that was uh, definitely a back pass. Jesus Christ, Mike Dean. Uh, Perez. Uh, now, he wasn't the star of the show on this occasion. Uh, he worked well with Almiron, as I've said. He worked well with Yedlin. Uh, there was some... Decent play, uh, he kept the ball, he looked a bit pacier in this week. Um, and, and you know, if Perez is playing with confidence, then that's what we like to see. He drew a good save from Boric uh, and seven for Perez. Atsu came on. I have to say, Atsu looked brilliant. Um, instant impact sub, similar to what Shelby was, but there was some excellent commitment from there. He was really trying to break into the box. You saw him taking about five different plays. He still had the ball. Um... And, you know, Bournemouth looked panicked when Atsu was on the ball, so that's good. That's what we like to see. It's better when he's not starting every week because he looked knackered after that big run that he had. Um, obviously, Almiron's come in and played quite well, so kept him out. But, you know, if we need him, he's on the bench, and I think that Atsu's a nice little creative outlet. Um, I think he's worthy of a seven as well, even though he was on the pitch for a very short amount of time. Uh, Rondon, last but not least, first half was very quiet. He had to sit deep, and um, a lot of time just spent on his own really uh, the long balls were affected by the wind a few went into the box he couldn't really get his head to them uh, but Bournemouth have got a quite a good defence I have to say uh, Daniels and that kind of pushing him off the ball he did have a few cracks but uh, again Boric had a good game in goal um, the free kick though was sensational top work from Rondon uh, he gets an 8 that kind of uh, wraps everything up for this week brilliant 2-2 draw I would have taken that it's a shame that we couldn't have maybe got the win but the, uh, the penalty changed the game and uh, it gave Bournemouth with a lifeline which they didn't really uh, deserve uh, given that it wasn't a really a, a decent call for a penalty but you know these things happen and um, it's one of those isn't it at least we didn't lose that's the main thing um, and when we now go into what is the definite break now I said it was a break last week but definite break this week and um, keep watching the channel the guys will be breaking down that performance on the Over Smiling Faces podcast you will have previews coming from Aaron's um, FIFA videos and you've also got Andy with the away say which is the new video please check them out and go back and watch them all give them all all alike, make sure that this is the best YouTube channel for Newcastle United fans, which of course it is. Hello. Um, and on that note, Jesus, have a, have a lovely weekend. Oh, uh, mm, mm. oh that's Fabian. Here you go, lad. Mm. Get well soon.